on uh, showing how important interfacing can be. Um, a little bit about me. My name is Niels Bracek. You can see me in the net with the username uh, Nibra or on Twitter as a hippie with PHP in the middle. Uh, I'm working as a software quality consultant, developing software since ages. <laughs> and I worked on mainframes, Amiga, PC, embedded systems, nearly everything you can think of. Um, the only thing I didn't program yet is bicycles. And I'm doing PHP since uh, 1999 and Joomla since it was Mambo. And uh, when I started with Mambo, I decided to make my own CMS because I found some flaws in, in Mambo. But then Joomla came and I uh, decided to join Joomla instead. And I'm clean code evangelist. So uh, clean code is very important to me and it should be to you. But that's another story. So let's talk about Joomla X. What is it about? Joomla X is designed to use uh, state-of-the-art architecture and technology. It should show how a CMS should be written if it was written today. Uh, without all the, the legacy we have from the last 15 years. So this project uh, serves as a lighthouse um, for the development of current, current Joomla versions. So we show how it can be done, how it should be done, and the current Joomla should evolve against it, or towards it. And uh, on the other side, everything we've got ready in Joomla X will be backported to the current Joomla trunk, so the gap gets smaller and smaller. So one day we have a one-click upgrade. Yeah? A new code for, for Joomla should be written in a way so it's possible to use it in, in Joomla X. A good example is class uh, proposal for, for ACL. It will be made in, in such a way. And um, I don't know it's still uh, current, but uh, there was something about web, web components in, in Joomla 4. Uh, we have a similar concept in, uh, in Joomla X. So there would be a smooth pass on that area. And existing code should be refactored during the versions uh, until it meets the coding standards we have there. The final goal is to switch to the new architecture one day with a one-click update, and I hope it's not a too far future. But we can't know that yet. The most important thing with Joomla X is uh, design for change. Because um, we always encountered situations where we got stuck because we were using new tools or we were using Bootstrap 2 or we were using this or using that and couldn't easily change. And that's a big problem. We, we can't evolve as, as fast as the outer world does because we, we are stuck. Uh, so we must find ways to get a better pace. To, uh, to be able to react faster on, on uh, every change in the outer world, being wherever it be. So uh, what we are doing is to define interfaces everywhere. Everything is connected only through interfaces. So the implementation hides, hides behind and can be exchanged by something better. The communication between the application parts, components, uh, is done with three kinds of messages. Commands, queries, and events. There's nothing like one class calling another from another component. For example, if you want to do ACL, you don't talk to the ACL component, you just do a query to get your information. So that's the interface between those two. So you can exchange ACL whenever you want to whatever you want, as long as this interface is implemented. It will work. So you can use LDAP service or your own or even none. Yeah, most of sites, 80%, 90%, don't need users. 
Uh, just need an admin. But you don't need user management. Yeah, the storage is handled by repositories and data mappers. Repositories makes it easy to query data. And uh, data mappers make it easy to connect to any data source. Be it web service, be it a, a database, being at a drunken monkey on the keyboard. No problem. Technically it's the same. Components are completely agnostic about input and output. They produce data, not more. How this data is handled is up to somebody else, the renderer, for example, for rendering, or for sending it out uh, as a response for, for a web service. Yeah? So you never have to deal in your component again with uh, JavaScript, with any framework, because that's part of the template. The template takes care of frameworks, not your component. So uh, that leads to that any uh, front-end framework can be used. You can use Zerp, you can use Bootstrap, you can use Foundation, you can use Vanilla, you can use nothing if you want. Everything works. So you, you can uh, make an, an PDF renderer, uh, because, for example, you don't need menus in PDFs. When, if, in, if your page shows a menu, it will be ignored by the PDF renderer because it doesn't make sense, for example. That's one option. Depends on your implementation. All that's important is the interfacing. The interfaces are defined, and as long as the renderer has the right interface, it will work, whatever comes out on the other side. So now let's have a look at the advantages, the, what, what does it give to people? If you do this clean architecture and make it so, yeah, some people say high academic level, what is the benefit? Why do we do that? So um, I've tried to, to show it for some target groups. For example, the site owner, uh, administrator, or like Brian calls it, the content editor. Um, one of the things is content is structured by pages, not by records in a database, by pages. And pages have URLs, and uh, we don't have to define menus for that. The structure is defined by the pages, and you get a menu out of the box reflecting this menu. Of course, you can build others if you need That's something what different. Pardon? That's what this. That's, that's yeah, but, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's just good. Yeah? So you have no item ID, you have full control over CEO because you can call your URL whatever you want. And uh, it's connected to, to a page with some content. Uh, user management or other components uh, are only installed if you need them. So if you don't, have uh, users on your site, you don't have a user component, so you don't have this access, uh, this uh, attack surface, so you're more secure. Yeah? You, if you don't have code you, you don't need, it can't be attacked. And each part, the user management, the renderers, and um, the ACR, and what so else, are packages in itself and are uh, updated, each uh, by themselves. So uh, there's no need to, to ever exchange the whole system like we have now. If we now go to Joomla 4, we change nearly everything, a little bit, everywhere, and you, in the end, get, get a new system uh, without exactly knowing what is changed. Here, only the one component or part of component that needs change is changed. Everything else stays. And you have a lot of control about, uh, yeah, about that. And uh, you get a more consistent UI in the backend because uh, also the backend is something that's rendered. And because it's a uniform renderer, everything is rendered the same way. Um, so it's easier to learn and it's, it has a better usability. 
Yeah? There's only a few points for, for the site owner. You could find a lot more, but this should be enough. Let's look at the site builder integrator. What do they have or get? So we will use a composer-like dependency management for all these components. Yeah, for example, if you uh, want to install uh, an event component, uh, you actually need users because <laughs> otherwise they could book. So um, you, you need to have users for that, but maybe you don't have. So as soon as you install this event component, it tells you, well, uh, I need some kind of user implementation. Here is a couple of things that were useful that I could use here. Please choose one. Uh, and you get it. Well, that's the basic idea behind that. And it allows you to uh, write in a, in a little jumble or XML file or whatsoever um, your setup of components that you usually want to use. And you just put that file onto the server and say, please build. It pulls anything in and you decide it's ready. Yeah. So it's, it could be very fast to make a setup. Because what you load, upload to, to the server is just this file and, and a kind of Kickstarter. And it will be completely scriptable. Any functionality within Joomla and the components will be accessible on the command line. That means that you can write rather complicated, if you want, scripts that do anything sufficient or sophisticated with Joomla. Yeah, that's a very good thing for, for uh, cron jobs. I have a lot of clients that, that need cron jobs and, and uh, need to do things from time to time. And uh, that will be much easier than now to interface into that. So we uh, get a much better automation. You get web API out of the box. Yeah? So uh, it's not only to provide your data, your own data as a web service, but also the consumption of web services will be much easier because you just need a data mapper that talks to that. And uh, behind this data mapper, all data sources are unique, are the same. Uh, so we have, there's no uh, difference between a database or a web service, if you query Facebook, for example. Yeah? So uh, it's much easier to, to integrate things. You can use arbitrary front-end framework, so you can use that you are most familiar with, yeah, where you're good at. You don't have to use Bootstrap 2 and be a foundation fan. Yeah, that's bad. If you're good at foundation, you should use foundation, yeah, because you want to build something good for your client. So now you will be enabled to do that. And uh, because we can exchange it at any point of in time, we have no logins any longer. This Bootstrap 2 Mutus problem will never occur again. Because this is a decision you don't make for the project at all, but for your specific side. Yeah? On this side, I need this. On this side, I need something else. You can do that. And we are following the PHP standard recommendations, the PSRs, uh, for example, uh, PSR 15, it's not finished yet, uh, but it's uh, a thing about uh, HTTP stacks that allows uh, to handle messages, requests, and responses. And uh, it defines how these uh, modules communicate and how they work together. And this will open up the possibility for you to find any middleware, that's, that's the name of it, uh, on the market and put it into Joomla and use it. And it will work. Without any need to, to, to make uh, any um, customization. Yeah? On the other hand, any uh, PSR 15 middleware you build can be used in any other framework because it's a standard. Yeah? So uh, it's much easier to, to extend. 
So next group and last group for today uh, is the extension developer. It's a very important group, of course, because uh, yeah, that's, that's the money in the ecosystem. <laughs> so we have the orthogonal architecture, that's what it's called. That's uh, combining horizontal and vertical concerns. Yeah? Uh, that means if you write a component for, uh, let's say, events, and uh, there's a horizontal component, tagging, versioning, ACL, your component is connected with that automatically. You don't have to write one single line of code for that. You just get it out of the box and it's just a thing of configuration if you want tagging for that. You just turn it off or on. Not more. Mm. It works out of the box. Yeah? The communication, as I said, is made with messages between these. And you just have to, to send a message. For example, I've, I'm, I'm going to store. That's uh, the database layer doing that for you already. Uh, and uh, there you can hook in and add the text for that. Or if the form is shown, you automatically get fears for, for the text. Yeah? You get crud out of the box. All these create, replace, update, uh, read, uh, update and delete stuff. You don't have to write a single line for that. The yeah? only thing you have to do is to define your entities. So it's something like the JForms definition now. You just tell what fields you have, what restrictions these fields have, um, if, if you want a special label for that, and so on, not more. Yeah, so development can get very fast with that. Because most of the code, if you look into a component, is boilerplate code, copied from some content. Yeah, and uh, that will never happen again. If your component does more than just CRUD, if it has business logic, then you're fine. Then if it's something to program, you're just writing this business logic. You're writing methods or functions, um, taking data objects as parameters and delivering data objects. That's all. Rest is handled by, the, by Joomla. Yeah. So you, you can have a, a thing that, that checks or validates or, or whatsoever. You can do with the data object whatever you want. The only thing is you get data objects in and you deliver data objects. That's the only thing. Mm, that should be easy. So again, interfaces everywhere. We have nearly no coupling. <laughs> yeah. um, at least low tight coupling. So uh, each part is very easily testable. Yeah, we can do unit tests without uh, any, any problems, like we have now, with all the dependencies, we have to mock everything. Here you can test against the interfaces, and uh, most interfaces will deliver the mocks you need for testing automatically. So, an output is made with content elements, that's something uh, It's in line with web components. It's blocks of, of uh, a structure with some CSN on, uh, CSS on it, on some JavaScript on it, and it's just seen as a single element. And uh, such an element takes a special data structure, you feed it, and it's displayed. So you can, let's say you have a, a content element called teaser. That's what we have in the block view. It's a, it's a headline, uh, a paragraph, an image, and a link. Yeah, that's a teaser. How, how you put CSS on it, uh, CSS on it, on, on, on let it look, it doesn't matter. But the structure is something that's highly uh, reusable. Yeah, you can use it for your event component again to show uh, your event locations, for example, the very same element. So uh, in the end, on the website, the look is identical, if you want. 
Yeah, it, out of the box it is. So you, you, you get a consistency you have never seen before. Yeah? So that's a few of the advantages for the extension developer. In summary, we get better SEO, security, stability, usability, setup, automation, integration, accessibility, accessibility, development, portability, manageability, accessibility. <laughs> ah, a lot of abilities. Yeah? So. <laughs> yeah? We have to define an interface for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, are there any questions until now? No. Yeah? First of all, I'm sorry to say, but are you inventing the wheel again? Go to stream, go to socket, they also just using the interface. Yeah. At the end of the day, when you take the socket idea or the stream idea, someone has to parse it and to deal with the parameter that are stored. Yeah. And, if you, and that's most, the most of the work. And if someone will tell me, and I try to uh, come with an idea, not similar to that, but in the same direction, if you, I will use Angular or any other of these uh, bootstrap, Angular, you name it as the front end, then it's, it's not a jungle. It's something new. You have an only backend, which will be a framework, and then everyone will have to develop his own interface, which will be a nightmare for developer. No, you don't have to. For, it will be a yeah. nightmare for users because they don't have one unique. One will come with one solution, the other one will come with another solution. Yeah, that's, that's a only a, a corner of it. I can speak about the backend in the same way. I think that the idea of having interface instead of uh, uh, calling, it's a good idea. It's, it should be uh, tested and, and come with something which is more um, concrete, more specific to see if we can do it. And only after that, you can come with an idea that, okay, that's all this better will be realistic. I, I think that half of them will be not realistic, <coughs> not true. Yeah, but it is. We have a proof of concept and it's running. Um, what, what we will do is not only define the interfaces, of course. Uh, we will, of course, deliver at least <coughs> two kind of user management. This for no uh, admin only and with users like we have now. Uh, all the functionality we have now in Joomla will be implemented there against those <coughs> interfaces. So that's what you get out of the box. But you can exchange them, what you can't now. You can't connect Joomla, the current Joomla, to an LDAP server. Because you can't exchange the user uh, component without losing the updatability. Yeah? So we have a problem here. Uh, since we now make a clear separation between the user object and all the rest, we can exchange the user object and get the user information from Elder. Everything else, it stays the same in the end. The thing we, we are changing is the communication between the elements, the, the different components. And what we, what we change is that we have a clear separation of concerns. One component is doing exactly one thing. So the user component or the article component is not bothering with tagging, versioning, and all that stuff, or workflow. There's a separate concern. There's a separate uh, component doing that. Yeah? And since that is a horizontal concern, it can do it for everything. So you have versioning for your users, if you want, out of the box. So what you're saying is that we have to choose a better decomposition of our system. Yeah. The system is too tight. But it's it should not, from my point of view, it should not go far and say, okay, I, will can, I can use any, uh, in any architecture that I want or any um, new uh, uh, framework or new, uh, how do you call it? Uh, the front of frameworks. 
Hmm? Um, then they were was, was talking about the front end frameworks, the JavaScript or, or, or CSS frameworks. They will evolve massively. And uh, it's deadly if we take five years to follow. Yeah? We must be able to follow immediately. So, of course, you will get a renderer with Joomla if you install it that does the current thing. You will get one that does the current Bootstrap 2, so you can reuse what you have. But you will be able to, if you're more familiar with, with, with foundation and want to use foundation, now you can do it. And nothing from the CMS will interfere with that. So it, the, what we give you is, is freedom to do what you, are best, what you can do best. We are not taking anything away. Just work. Okay, other questions? Yeah? Uh, so we foresee uh, components as we see up for this. So, I mean, do you still see components existing or I mean, will they be replaced by some other kind of engine? So we have components for this module. So with this new architecture, do we still have components? Can they be still be? Uh, we will have components, of course. And the question was if, if uh, the new architecture will uh, make components, modules, plugins obsolete. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it will not. Uh, of course, it will change because components will concentrate on the main concern. You don't have to bother with categories because category is a component of its own. And you get categories. You can use them. Because no, the site integrator and site owner can use them. As an extension developer, you don't care. Yeah? You don't have to think about it. That's the magic. Um, for modules, they will go. Because modules are nothing but different views on components. Not all. All of them. Not two at all. All of them. Not two at all. Component is an application, and module is a view of something that I want to re, uh, review in a different place and different way. Okay. Yeah, for, forget about no, place. the component. Menu, there's no component for menu for something. Yes, of course, the yes. articles. Yes. And, but, uh, <laughs> the the yeah. model of accessibility, I will give it to you. I have a model of accessibility, yeah. no component, and you don't need it to put a component. And you want it, it does, as a model. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Then now it's a component. What we know as, as, as a module now, um, it, let's say in most cases, is just a different view in a corner of your website on a component. So, so, what, so, what we, so what we do, so what we do is we take this place, we take this place in the website, and tell it, I want to see that data. No. And that structure. No. An example that of that is, no, not in this case. For example, for it accessibility. On, uh, change change font, change that, that's no. That's what One at a time, please. So the example which I would give is uh, mo mo modules that are not linked to components. Uh, an example would be uh, increase font size, decrease font size, change theme, change colors. So. You say that those are not linked to components directly. That has nothing to do with, uh, with content management. That's part of the template. Yeah. That's not a module in the sense of this architecture. You, you, can, you can call it module. Yeah, that's no problem. Uh, but that's nothing the core should take care of. The final result, please. When we talk about the final result, the component view is just a piece of HTML code. And not complete HTML document. Which can be embedded in the main the usual current Joomla model, but use the same piece of HTML. So basically, the final result is the same. Yeah. But model works with module parameters, and component users get parameters, request parameters. Yeah. But we can just change them with an array of parameters. Or it is registered in this case. It's actually the same. Yeah, and in, in, in the end, the result, of course, because we, we the objection is to produce that result. Yeah? Uh, so, what, what happens is uh, we just make it easier to, to access stuff from your template because all, all you get is, is data 
and the information about in uh, what kind of element this should be rendered. For example, take a list of articles. Yeah, you can render them as a block view. You can render them as a uh, most read list or whatsoever. It's just a list of articles, it's your data. And in the front end, when you build this, the page, you just tell in which format you want to see this data. And that's what making, what's making modules from the point of view from the content management system obsolete. Yeah? Be because uh, all, all those modules we have just are different views on, on the data we have. So uh, we are not longer restricted to have one component per page. You can draw from, from any table in, in your database data into one page. Yeah? And there's interconnection, of course, between those. So uh, if you display an article, you can have a sidebar showing the author with his bio and, and a list of last uh, 10 most recent articles from this author, for example. You get these out of the box yeah? just by requesting the article. Because the article is referring to the author, the author again to his list of articles. So you have all this data in your template. You can do with it whatever you want. Yeah? So everything that has to do with display is template only. Nobody else, just template. Because for PDF, for an EPUB, or Whatever, you, you need totally different things. Yeah? So, uh, for your component, there's no difference. You're just delivering data. Yeah? Okay, next. So, uh, you made a point where uh, you said that uh, front end components could be uh, swappable, so I can use this. So, just to put that in perspective, is the approach similar to Laravel plus QJS that they have? Don't know. I never looked at Laravel. I, I actually don't know. One question about the content element. Is that similar to JLayout? Kind element? of, kind of, yes. But uh, more strict. Is so, the strict thing that you expect? Yeah, it. Um, Yes, you, you expect for, for a certain content element, you expect a data object with certain fields. Um, it would be possible, we haven't implemented that yet, uh, but it's possible to provide a mapping. So if your data object that you originally have has different field names, you can make a mapping to what, what the content element needs. So if content element, uh, expects title, but here you have real name because you're displaying a user. You can say, okay, um, for this title field, use that real name field. Yeah? Uh, in that way, you can, you can map nearly anything to anything uh, and have an, uh, consistent, a, a consistent view, a look on, on, on the whole side. The marketing uh, do you think about it's going to be data-based or...? No, it's, uh, it's something... Uh, if you think of a page builder, where, where you arrange your elements on your page, um, there you have properties for that. And, uh, if you say for, for this article teaser, for example, you pull a user, uh, then you do the mapping by drawing the fields. Okay, I want that here, that here, that here. Yeah? That's how you do it as a content editor. That's the idea, at least. We are not at the corner yet. Yeah. Yes. So basically, in Joomla X, we can use Joomla as headless CMS? Yeah, okay. absolutely. It's not. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because of the data mappers, you, you can use existent installations of other CMSs, their database, as a data source. Okay. Yeah? Uh, but Joomla provides the alternative for the uh, front end. Uh, yes, of, of at least uh, a minimal set that makes it work. Yeah. Yeah? Um, every, everything that's special that you want 
we, have, we, will, we want to enable you to do that. Okay. Yeah? But we will not provide everything. Of course not. Okay. We can't. Okay. Yeah? We, we, what we provide is ability. So, ability. We, have, we had a lot of abilities. Okay. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> so, I can use an extension from uh, Jet or use the composer vendors to provide the package that I want. Yeah. Okay. In the end, if, if everything runs as, as uh, we think, uh, everything uh, is in the vendor folder. Yeah, because every little component here is installed in a composer way. And has its own version, manage version management, dependency management, and so on. So that should be pretty easy to, to keep it up to date. And um, yeah, I can't think of a... Of, of, uh, of, 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 uh, easier way to do that. Uh, if I could, I had chosen that. <laughs> okay, at last I have uh, some resources for you. Um, you can find the project on the volunteers portal, the working group. Um, we, haven't, we, we haven't been very active the last six months, uh, but that's another story. We are gaining momentum again. We started working again. Um, you can see a couple of other more technical uh, sessions on YouTube from uh, the World Conference from JAP and Joomla Day Germany. We are communicating on GLIP in that group, the Joomla X working group. Um, I, I guess we have to, to open a public channel uh, where, where, every, where, where everybody can chime in. This is not public, you have to be invited. Uh, on GitHub, there are a couple of projects. The Joomla Pythagoras is the main project. Uh, but I tried to, uh, and that's why it's on, on my repos. Um, to start an RFC procedure, because if we rely on interfaces everywhere and they should not change during time ideally we should think about them very thoroughly before we use them and this is the Joomla standards uh, is a place uh, where that should happen of course on a, on a Joomla repo of, uh, <laughs> in the end uh, but that's just a proposal uh, how the voting process and the uh, decision-making process for the RFCs should work. So I, I would like you to, to look at it and comment it uh, and see if we can make it even better. I started on one. I called it con content types, but the better name is content elements. Um, that's far from ready, but it shows the way how it should go. Yeah? The source code for that uh, is in the Joomla standards repo. And the second repo here, the Joomla standards content types, is generated with a script automatically. So it can be published on Composer. So you as an extension developer, for example, can uh, develop against this interface. Yeah? It's exactly the way PSR, the, the uh, standards, do. Yeah? And the last one is uh, a repo where, where I started to, to build uh, a few vanilla content elements. Yeah, we, we can have a look at. Uh, there will be a few more. I got class to <laughs> uh, agree on, on, on building a proposal for the ACL. That's in line with, with that uh, for Drupal 4. So we already have a bridge here on that edge, and uh, that will grow massively, I hope. Okay, that was that. Any further questions? Yeah? So, roughly how many, uh, how many uh, person months of work do you see to get this to a point which can actually be released? Uh, as, uh, this will be released as soon as we can do it with one click. And I guess it will be from Joomla 6. Uh, because uh, there are some gaps 
which uh, lead to some deprecation and renewal cycles. So we can't do it in one version. That's why we started as Joomla 4 and ended as Joomla X, because we don't know what X is yet. Yeah? But, but, but I guess it could be Joomla 6, Joomla 7, but I'm, I'm not sure. And that won't be by what compatible most probably. You, you get, we have uh, foreseen uh, a compatibility layer for current Joomla, uh, but I hope that we don't need it. Yeah? Be because that's, that's why we work this way. Exactly. You, yeah. you build the legacy. Yeah. But if we have this compatibility layer, there's a possibility for it. I haven't tried it yet. But it could be possible that we even could make Joomla 1.5 components so running. Like you said, again. a WordPress data source, yes. or Joomla 3 data source that just talks to Max. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, it could be possible. I, I don't know it yet. So it's not a promise. Yeah. It's absolutely not a promise. The one thing I think is a promise, yeah. but not this. <laughs> um, it could be possible that we could run legacy components in Joomla 1.0, 1.5, 1.6, 2.5, and with that, we hope we get all those legacy uh, installations out there into the future, because some of them depend on, on the custom extension and that's supported. But that way, we could get them into the future, and that's something I personally dream of. Yes. But so Exactly. It's a, it's a dream. It's, it's nothing I promise. I have a one technical issue in here. Uh, when, I, when we come to use a composer for front end modules or templates, um, can we see uh, all the extensions uh, used by front end developers in our back end extension in Extension Manager? So basically, a visual uh, composer uh, component. The extensions. You know, you, you need to see what you have uh, in your front end and how to manage it. Yeah. Um, there, there, there are two aspects. One is uh, all, all the dependencies, and uh, as I said in the example before, uh, you maybe have four possible user components you could use uh, in conjunction with your event component. Um, so there should be a way to show uh, or give the information you need to make a decision. That's something uh, why I am member in the JET group because I won't have an eye on that. But there's no decision yet. We don't have an RFC for that yet. So uh, that's open. We don't know it yet. But of course, you're right. We must have something like that. Yeah? Does that answer your question? Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Okay. Then I uh, thank you very much for your interest and hope you spread the word. <laughs>